so I, so I don't have to use my glasses. Okay. Before Muhammad came, no? Yeah. There is no problem. No, let, let me tell you. So it's not eternal. Let me tell you. That's what. Second, you believe that well, Jesus, Jesus is the Holy God, the Sister. You believe. This is the Jesus, the Holy God, Holy Man. Yeah, right? yeah. So he died as a Holy Man and the Holy God. Okay, okay. Let, let, let me tell you this. Number one, you're wrong about the Quran from an Islamic perspective. Orthodox Sunni belief is that the Quran is eternal. Okay. So I don't know if you're Shia or you've gone you've gone a little bit away from your Sunnism, but you ain't correct on that. Secondly, right? Do we know everything in the universe? Right. There's a mystery, isn't there? So how much more is it going to be a mystery? that God became a man. We're not going to fully comprehend it. So when you say God became a man and you think you've sussed it out, you haven't sussed it out, bro. It's a mystery. Even Paul says, you know, it's a mystery. In, I think it's uh, 1 Timothy 3.16, he says, Great is the mystery of God, that Christ became, uh, God became a man. Okay? So it's a mystery. It's beyond our understanding. Because what a lot of Muslims do, with all due respect, is they kind of straw man the argument. You say God became a man, haha, we got you now, right? No, no, but you ain't got us because it's a mystery. It's beyond your intellect, bro. It's beyond your mind. So don't straw man us. You don't fully understand that what happened in the God man. You did me understand. Tell me, explain why. Can, can, I, can I tell you everything about physics? No. So how can I tell you how great God is that He would become a man? You ask me as believe as something you don't understand. No, no, no. We, we understand God in part. You say that God is nothing like us. Yeah? Yeah. So how can you understand something that's not like yourself? We know God. We know God. We know His uh, adjective. We don't know. It's a, it's a man of God. Okay. One of the th teachings of Islam is we cannot know God because God is nothing like us. So how can you know something that's not like you? We know God because He's like us. He's a love. He's mercy. He's a relational God. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And so He made us to be relational. So we, we are made in the image of God. And the image of God is a relational God. He loves. But you're saying we cannot... So you're in the Bible. God is the world. Yeah. God is the world. Oops, yeah. But here, it must be including the shaitan, you know? Shaitan. Say, say that. Evil, evil. You know? So God lived evil or not? Love evil. Shaitan. Satan, yeah. He's not the God. If God so loved the world, he's not about human beings. Yeah. No, no, why, why? So, why is a human being? Because we're what? Including uh, the shaitan. Okay. Okay, let me... Including the including... Let, let, there's a number one rule when you're reading a book. It's important, listen, it's important you learn how the writer's writing. Yeah? So if, if we're reading a Dickens book, we don't read it as if it's Mein Kampf Hitler's book. Right? We read it and say, how did Dickens write this book? This book here, John, was written by John. So we've got to understand this text in the context of John. Yeah? Yeah. So in the context of John, Jesus is coming down to redeem and save the world as in human beings. And when Christ died on the cross, wait, let me finish. Let, let me finish. No, let me finish. Let me finish. When Christ died on the cross, the devil, his power was destroyed by Jesus when he died on that cross. And you know something? Isn't it wonderful that a Muslim and a Christian can have a nice dialogue like this in Manchester, yeah? Isn't that good? That's the way it should be, yeah? Respectful and dialogue, yeah? And he is intellectually honest. He gives questions, and I ask him questions, and he replies, and it's really good, bro. Do you want to keep going? Any other questions? So, what I'm saying is, if you read John's book, it's 20 odd chapters, you read that book, and in the context, it's about defeating the devil. So when it says, for God so loved the world, it's not about the devil, it's about human beings being saved in Jesus, bro. Yeah? So that's not means uh, God loves animals? Uh, no, it means, it means he loves creation as well. Okay, Satan is a creation. No, 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 no. It's quite clear that Satan is an enemy of God and an enemy of people.
Yo stand there, bro. Yo stand there, bro. When Christ died on that cross, right? And it says here, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. To Satan believe in Jesus for his salvation. So it's not for him, is it? If, if he repented, maybe, but he hasn't repented. He won't repent. You know why? Because the Bible... God doesn't love the Hindus. God doesn't love the Hindus. God doesn't love the Chinese people. It's a good point. It's a good point. But when Jesus died, and when Jesus said these words, you haven't been born yet. So you haven't been born yet, but yet it's for you, before you were even born. He's saying to you, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute, before you were even born, bro, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Before you were even born, he died for you, bro. He died on that cross for you, yeah? Now, no, we're born again, we're born again, sister. Born again Christians. Born again. Very carefully. Well, it's good to see you, sister. We're, we're here teaching about Jesus being born again, and we're having a nice dialogue, me and a Muslim here. We're having a nice chat about Islam and Christianity. Now, let me ask you a question, bro. How do you get saved in Islam? How? So let's say I want to get saved and know that I'm going to heaven. How does that happen in Islam? By God, Allah. Allah? Yes? Only God, not the God. Okay, so, so you just confess your sin and you ask God to forgive you. Yes. So today... After we believe that Allah is the one and the Prophet Muhammad is the best of messenger of Allah. So, today, are your sins forgiven? Are your sins forgiven? Now, did you see that? Did you see that? I asked him, in Islam, and now, due respect, <coughs> how do you get your sins forgiven? He says, just ask Allah for forgiveness. <coughs> then I asked him, are your sins forgiven? And most Muslims, 99%, with all due respect, and we're having a respectful dialogue, <coughs> most Muslims can't say their sins forgiven. Now, a Christian, a born-again Christian, can say their sins are forgiven. The reason being, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin. And if you confess your sin, you can know that your sins are forgiven, bro. Okay. If someone believes that Jesus died on the cross, yeah. and after that, he goes to still leave every sin he do and after that. He goes to heaven? Now this is a good question. I like the question. Listen, if I'm an apple tree, if I'm an apple tree, and I never ever bear one apple in my life, am I an apple tree? If I am a pear tree, and never in my life bear any pears, am I a pear tree? Ah, but am I really a pear tree, really? Really? That's like saying, I'm an actor, but I've not been in any film. Yeah, so, so what I'm saying, his argument is, uh, if you're a Christian, you can go on sinning and sinning and still be a Christian. What I'm saying is, in uh, John chapter 15, Jesus said this, I am the vine, you are the branches. You must bear fruit. If you don't, I will cut you down. Listen. No, listen, listen. No, listen, listen. What he's saying is, I am the vine, you are the branches. You've got to bear grapes. You've got to bear fruit. If you're a Christian, but you're not bearing fruit, if I say I'm a Christian, but every every week I'm going to the nightclub, sleeping with girls, and coming down here and drug dealing, and then going down there and fighting, and say I'm a Christian, I'm not a Christian. No. Because if you're a Christian, listen, listen. If you're a Christian, you are attached to the branch. You should be, but you should be bearing fruit. If you're in Jesus, in the vine, you should be bearing fruit. Yes. Yeah. So you can't just go off and live your own life and sin. No. So I live and not sin. And I believe that Jesus goes to the dead and die on the cross. For our sin. I don't have sin against this world. Say that again, bro. I don't have any sin in this world. 
Ah, now you're making another good point, right? Because even though we believe in Jesus, we ain't perfect yet. We're going to be perfect when we're with him in heaven. But while we're down here, we're still going to make some mistakes. Like me and you might be having a coffee, yeah? And we might start arguing. And I, as a Christian, might lose my temper. I should lose my temper, but I might do. Because, you know why? Because I ain't perfect. But listen, if I start going to the nightclubs and sleeping with girls and come down here kicking off and fighting, then I'm really not a Christian. But I can make mistakes, bro. How yes. many mistakes can you make? You can make thousands. Thousands, bro. Pardon? We believe in Maria, but not like Catholics. No, no, Catholics believe, uh, first of all, Christianity believes in a trinity, Father, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, yeah? Three are one, right? But what the Catholics have done in tradition, they've exalted Mary, that you go to God through Mary. Yeah. Well, well I, was a, I was at a funeral last week, a Catholic church funeral. I was at the funeral, and that's what I heard the father say, and that's what I heard in the, in the service. What do Muslims think? Are you a Muslim? So what do Muslims think? <laughs> so Muslims think that homosexuality is fine, and so what you were trying to do is ask me about Christianity, and then when I say about Christianity, everyone's going to say, oh, homophobic. But listen, folks, listen, folks, you come under Sharia law, and you're soon going to know what homophobia is, because we as Christians don't believe in Sharia law. We don't believe in taking gay people and killing them. We, but wait a minute, we believe, wait, no, I'm, I'm answering your question. I'm answering your question, because you were trying to trick me. You were trying to, no, 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 he was, he was trying to trick me. No, 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 I'm not ashamed, you're ashamed of it. You're ashamed of it, I'm not ashamed. You're ashamed of Sharia law, because in Sharia law, if you do research on Sharia law, you will soon know what the Islamic view is about homosexuality. The Bible says that it's wrong, but you have to repent, and there's love to the gay person, Romans chapter one. In Sharia law, there ain't no love to the gay person. You go and research it. You go and research it. You go and research Sharia law and homosexuality. The, the Dawa teams in the UK, the Dawa teams in the UK are trying to give Islam a softy look in this country. No, he asked me. I'm leading a Saudi Arabian student around the city. I'm talking to your Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. We're having a polite conversation. We're, no, we're having a, listen, no, no, no. You should be ashamed of yourself. We're having a lovely conversation. We're having a lovely conversation. We're having a look. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You see how that political? Do you see that? Do you see? Do you see how that political correct? Goody two shoes coming in there. Comes in. All right. He comes in. Gareth, Gareth, just turn the camera about. 